my next question here is like what actually starts to trend or what actually starts to happen when women commit to progressing their muscle and strength right and you know alex i, I guess you can you can give our our first answer here because you know you work you've worked with a, uh, a lot Lots of, of women lot over of the women, last yeah um over the last few years so what you know what actually so based off of what women think are going to happen we, we kind of just discussed what actually starts to happen with women when they start to train yeah i, I think that um i think that a lot of self-confidence is rooted in strength training uh, I, I think that it was a big piece of, of how i found my own self-confidence um, and i find that within a lot of the women that we work with that i work with in the, that i've worked with in the past that i work with currently find a, a lot of self-confidence in one keeping the promise to themselves that they're going to show up every day and train as hard as they can but also prove to themselves that they are significantly stronger than what they they previously thought i I can't even probably count the number of individuals that have come to me and they send their initial training clips of them performing a leg press or a back squat or a hip thrust or a deadlift. And it is painfully too easy. Like they are just going through the motions and it's like, okay, I did eight repetitions, but by golly, I could have done 20 at that weight if I just kept going and really challenged myself. And so getting them, getting them to a place where they're increasing the load and proving to themselves like, oh man, I am way stronger than I thought. And then they continue to to build off of that and, and build self-confidence and, and build uh, strength, not only just from a muscular perspective, but again, I think it builds mental fortitude and those different things. So there's, there's so much outside of resistance training that comes with it. And I understand that some individuals love resistance training. Some individuals don't and they understand it's good for them. So they continue to go. And so, um, it's one of those things that I think there's so much value, uh, that you can apply to your entire life just from simply getting in the gym and really challenging yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. And what about the composition changes that your clients have seen? Um, are they mostly happy and they never thought that they could look like this? Or do they feel like they're this bulky woman that they don't love anymore and they hate the way that they look? Um, they, they certainly are not bulky and, and hate the way they look. They, they love how they look. They, they feel that self-confidence. They see the hard work that they've put in, um, within oftentimes their glutes and their delts and their hamstrings and all of these improvements. And I think that more often than not, individuals come to us in a place where they're not happy with how they look and they feel as though that maybe they have too much quad tissue or they're, they're doing so many things that are just not working for them. And we put them into a protocol that is going to be more facilitated for them and educate on that whole process. So they have an understanding past the time of working with us. And I think that that's a very valuable thing that we do and uh, setting people up for success, not only in the time of working with us, but the time past that. And I think that the, the confidence part of things is also understanding how it all works. And so by giving them the opportunity opportunity of like, hey, this is why we're doing the training this way. This is why we're structuring your nutrition the way that we are with this training and so on and so forth is a really helpful tool because it's a crummy place to be when you leave a coach and it's like, all right, well, that was awesome. But, uh, I have no idea how to use that. And the reality is, is that you can take those protocols and the food that was there and run it forever. And the likelihood of it being the same level of success three years down the road is probably pretty slim. And so you have to have the tools and understanding of how to adjust these things to continue to see that progress. And I think that that's a really important piece for all the clients. Yeah. And then hormonally, I mean, you don't have to go into a deep dive, but just like the benefits of going and lifting and what that does for their hormonal health as a female, because a lot of people just think like lifting testosterone male, but what does that look like for females? Um, I, I mean, it's going to be uh, helpful. I think that we look at so many different factors from a, a hormonal function. When we look at testosterone, we look at estradiol, we look at progesterone, we look at DHEA, we look at all the functionality of the thyroid. There's a lot of things that go on and all of these things within moderation and, and not excess of resistance training are going to be uh, benefiting in a, in a positive manner. And, and so I think that, um, individuals who maybe experience some thyroid issues, some individuals who may be experiencing some hormonal downregulation or things of that nature would benefit from the resistance training in those different aspects. And I think that um, getting them like on the flip side of this, let's say an individual comes to us and this is common where they have a, a uh, estrogen dominant or estro estrogen dominant position. And so with that being the case, they come and, and they've 
individuals in that scenario may be performing orange theory and multiple sessions of that, and then also going in and, and running and then also going and, and doing resistance training. And so getting them to a, a volume allocation that's more fit for the calories that they have in place and also their hormonal function at that time gets them into a much better place. All of a sudden they're uh, sleeping a little bit better. Now we're getting into a greater balance and not in such an estrogen estrogenic dominant place. I can't talk today. Um, so that is something that uh, is is going to be helpful for sure. Yeah. And just because I did mention testosterone, I mean, testosterone isn't just a male hormone. It's not something that only males need. It's not only helpful for your like drive in the gym and your recovery in the gym, but also your drive and recovery in life and your libido, as well as a multitude of other factors. So it is something that has personally helped me and my hormones. And that's why I'm also passionate of that because it has just allowed me to be in better health and have a better understanding of my body and be able to move my body in a better way and live in my skin in a more comfortable way.